uh, members of the commission are present. And for staff, we have Carol Connell. All right, the first thing we have on the agenda is election of officers. We have election of officers every January. Do I have any nominations from the floor? This is Terry Graff. I nominate uh, the same officers that we have now for another year. All right, Terry has made a uh, Stephanie second it. Uh, any discussion? Uh, no? All those in favor say aye or wave your hand or something like that. Aye. Uh, 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 okay. All those opposed say nay. All right. You will have one more year of David and myself. Thank you, Terry. Caller number two. Okay, let's move on. Um, we have the consent agenda. That includes the minutes from the November 12th meeting, the financial report of January 5th, and uh, just correspondence they sent us the rules of the council. Do I have a motion to accept the consent? Consent agenda as um, submitted. I move we accept Carl, it. Carl makes a motion to uh, accept it. Russ, you second it? Yes. Yes, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, we've gone through the consent agenda. Moving right along, Carol, do you have any report for us today? Um, just a couple of things. The Parks Advisory Committee is moving right along for our master plan that we're developing this year. And uh, in case you didn't already know, there's a survey, a public survey, either in the mail or in the, see in the water bill or online and the city prefers the online response because it's a lot easier to tabulate uh so we have until we're collecting that information uh until march 1st and we'll be very interested in the results um then we'll move on towards developing a plan and won't be too long after that you will see it uh, the other thing I wanted to report is another plan that's in the works. That's the uh, Highway 101 <laughs> improvements. Um, the ODOT is yes, the Highway 101 yeah. uh, planning plan document for safety improvements, safety and transportation improvements. And uh, that's a little bit longer process. It's being funded by ODOT and this uh, police chief and I are on that committee, uh, the working committee to uh, as they progress. And right now we're forming with the mayor's help, uh, a stakeholders advisory committee of property owners and business owners that are on the highway so we can hopefully get some good feedback from those that are directly affected and so that's moving on and i think that's it okay um carol so the safety improvement on 101 is this just gearheart specific Yes, your transportation plan identified a, a very specific design and uh, improvements. And so because that was in our plan, ODOT is funding uh, the next phase of it, which is to figure out what they're going to be able to do out there in terms of the, all the lo logistics and driveways and, and geography and layout. And so it's both safety for uh, traffic and also bicycling and pedestrians and crossings at the highway um, and some landscaping and drainage problems that are out there. So it's, you know, we're not, we're a long way from actually doing that work, uh, but it's the plan is important to figure out exactly what they're going to do. Okay. Any 
Other questions for Carol? Nope. Okay, hearing that, uh, Commissioner, um, Austin, did you have, have anything you wanted to add to Carol's report about the, mark, the parks master plan? No, not, I was just, yeah, what Carol said was pretty much what I was gonna report back. Um, I've helped, I helped put together the survey, so hopefully everybody it has filled theirs out. I think as up to today, we have about 140 responses so far. So um, I'll be starting to take a look at those uh, preparation for our next meeting next week. So we'll start taking a look at some of that data and people's comments and um, incorporating it into the plan. Okay, sounds great. So Austin, um, how are we supposed to get that in our water bill? Yeah, it should have, it's gonna go out, it should have gone out in the first water bill in this, or the second one in December. I think there's a, one more the, in the January that would be going out. And then it's also on the city blog, uh, city website. There's a, an online survey monkey uh, did, format. That have. We didn't get it and I haven't heard of any of my neighbors having gotten it. I think because it, it's it should be in the next one if it hasn't gone out already in this in this in December one. Okay. So. And I hope that's it, right it, because it, yeah, the March yeah, first. So, yeah, way out there because of the fact that we want to make sure everybody got it. So. Yeah, if you guys don't get it, please let me know. I got mine, so um, maybe it was just the first first one that got sent out. I don't know. I got mine. As a blog uh, email from the city of Gearhart, and I just haven't responded to it yet. I received mine probably about a week ago in my water bill. So it depends on when you get your water bill, Stephanie. Yeah, I don't get one until February. Okay, well, that's why. Um, yeah, you can you can go go online and do it if you if you want to get ahead of it before. So. All right. Okay. Anything else from the commissioners? No. No? Okay. Um, we don't have the goals list in front of us where, you know, we're kind of, unless someone has something they'd like to say about the goals list, we'll just skip over that. No comments. Oh, nothing? All right. So. Visitors' comments. We have visitors. Do either one of the visitors want to say anything? Those are silent visitors. <laughs> All right. Um, we don't have any public hearings. We don't have any unfinished business. So the last thing we really have in our packet is the draft of the Class of County Housing Mitigation Plan. Carol will address that, please. Yes, yes, Mrs. Chair, Person, President. Um, so in your packet, you have a first round, or it's actually getting towards a, more towards a final round of the Gearhart section of the overall Class of County um, plan. It's been in the works for a while. Cheryl, I mean, uh, Christy and Chad have been doing a lot of the local stuff and I'm now in the uh, final stage of trying to get it all put together checking the data and working with you uh, to look at our priorities that are drafted here primarily the priorities any errors and uh, anything else you have to add so if you look at I've got this uh, landscape format shape and uh, page one is a summary, a table of what we think the magnitude of the problem is in Gearhart. So remember, all the jurisdictions in the county are, are doing the same thing, and they all have their own level of uh, vulnerability. And so we 
have done an initial assessment at staff level, which is what you see there drafted, low, are you with me, medium and high, uh, in these categories of coastal erosion, drought, earthquake, flood, landslide, tsunami, volcanic ash fall, wildfire and wind and storms. Uh, so as you can see under each one of those, there's either a low, high or medium initial, that's what those stand for, uh, under those particular hazards. Now, I just wanna point out that Somebody has some kind of cracking activity going on. Is that, do we know what that is? It's a phone. Okay. Okay. Anyway, um, I received like a hundred page document from Dogami, who is the Department of Geology and Mineral Industries. And uh, it has a lot of more information than what, <laughs> What we developed uh, as a staff and I was in the draft hazard plan that the county is working on. Um, and so I, I went through that and I, for your purposes, I added the gear mark section. It's, it's at a table that looks like this. The, the last two pages should be your last two pages. Two <laughs> page way to go. Three. Thank you. Oh yeah, 50. No. 62, 63. Got it, yeah. And if you need any um, explanation on any of that, I'm happy to answer. Now what the, this is president uh, found out or noticed very astutely right away is the second page still has the Gearhart Elementary School uh, under City of Gearhart critical facilities. And this is, you know, of course, the critical facilities are probably the most important items to be protected from any one of these hazards. And so the police, the fire, and the medical, Pacific Medical Group are there along with the school. Uh, when you take the school out, our numbers look better less vulnerable. Can I have somebody verify that Pacific Medical and Surgical Group is still there? It is. Okay, it is. okay good. And so uh, when you look at their rating of exposure that we have, it's a little different than the one that the staff did. Um, and so I guess the easiest way for me to review that is they, they put a medium um, under coastal erosion and I had a low. Uh, under landslide, they have high and very high where I had a low. And under wildfire, they had a high and I had a medium. Now, um, again, let me just back up one second here. This is based on, the risk is based on a quantitative approach of how many buildings would be affected and how much population would be affected. And that's the basis for the rating. It does not go into economic uh, values, land values, environmental issues. It's just based on a, a Placid County building inventory out of the tax assessor's database. So just so that you know, that's how the Dogami came up with these numbers. It's really about how many structures would be wiped out by these various um, hazards. Where would we have a landslide? Yeah, 
Well, that's, you know, that was surprised me. And I know for sure that we would have them against the hills, the hills that are where the water tower is on the east side of uh, the city. And that's something that came up later in our tsunami discussions. Remember, we were sending everybody that direction back in the day, a few years ago. And, and then in, I think, I don't know how this happened exactly or when, but the, the landslides will be pretty high potential right now. And therefore, there was a kind of a switcheroo and we decided in most cases, the likelihood of the tsunami and earthquake, it was high enough to get to the high dunes. And the other problem is getting to the hills, you would go through the bogs and and the traffic and the jams, and you, you may not get there in time to cross uh, the cranberry bogs because the water's going to come there first. Well, anyway, the landslides surprised me, but um, apparently we have more more of a hazard there than than we would think. It, it could also be, uh, what did I say? I, I have to really dive into this report a little more uh, because I just got it. But there's potentially 75 residents um, and 55 buildings in that category. So on this chart here that you have uh, that would be susceptible. And it could, it could be a floodplain. It could be around the edges, you know, erosion around the um, the beaches. I, I now that I think about it, Stephanie, <laughs> uh, Little Beach might be an area that's vulnerable to just land slipping on the edge, at least, of the banks. That's erosion, not a that's erosion. erosion. Oh. Well, I, it is erosion, and erosion is a little higher on here than I thought, too. Um, but maybe, I don't know. It's, I don't know. I have to dig deeper to see. So let's just look at that a little different way. If we have, according to this chart, 1,600 buildings, and 55 of them are exposed to landslides, uh, which is only 2% or let's see, and 5.2% residents, 75 residents, 55 buildings. I don't know exactly where those are. Can I, can I ask a generic question, Carol? This is Terry. Uh -huh. um, what do we do with this report and how does it affect what we do? All right, well, that's a good point. I didn't really go through the obvious. Um, we, it will become a basis for things that we do and to order to reduce the planning this. Well, all right, let's just go to it. So the next, and forget about the landslides for now, go to the mitigation actions, because this is where I, I need your help. Um, and you won't be having to do anything with this. I believe the process is the county adopts this plan. And we are in it uh, as one of the many jurisdictions. And I don't believe that we have to adopt it, but I'll find that out tomorrow because I'm meeting with the project leader. But it, regardless, it will be a printed document and become the basis, just like all of our other planning documents, for grants or direction on things that we can do to reduce these hazards. And so what you have starting on page three is a pretty long list based on these, you know, vulnerabilities, right? So if we say that they're high, we would make the higher priorities a higher priority and and look into doing some of these 
actions to mitigate. So I'm just going to try and run through those. You with me so far? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, before you start that, um, on the first part where you go to um, when you have your table and it gives an explanation of what each of them mean. Yeah. What happens to coastal erosion? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, because, uh, like I said, I just got this other document from Dogami, and if you go to the back, let's see, we don't think we have anything on coastal erosion back there. Uh, it's not in there. Thank you for your good eye. I, I uh, think we need... Wait. Well, yes, it's on the list, but there's no description is what she's saying on the first. There's no description, and there's a description of everything else. So I'm, I, I could see that the tides this last week, we did have some erosion going on out here. Yeah, the king tides, I bet. Well, yeah. Okay. And, so thank you. I will uh, find out why they didn't include that. That's exactly why I need your help here because I need some more eyes. And okay, so the, go on. And just to answer your question, Chair, the landslide, let's see if it says anything that will help us in that section. Frequent landslides during rainy months on our mountain roads, highways, and city streets. When Gearhart, it's most pronounced in the foothills, which I told you. But it can include erosion of the estuary banks of the Nicanicum, the Neowana, the Neocoxie rivers. So I guess the, some of the Nicanicum uh, river frontage, those buildings, uh, those homes could are more vulnerable. So let's say we have a flood and then there's erosion that flood and the creeks all fill up the Neocoxie and the Neowana, and that goes up through Gearhart and it could cause erosion on the banks, probably what it is. Okay, so thank you for pointing that out. If we can go through this mitigation action set of uh, things we will do, it would help me. Uh, the, the, plant, the city council just looked at this briefly at their um work session in december on the 29th and i'll just let you know which ones they have kept as high priorities the first one uh to relocate the fire station of course that being an essential um critical facility we know why that has to happen and the council, so that you know, is working on a due diligence report right now for the fire station, um, which they hope to have completed by the end of this first quarter. Anyway, that, that's the highest priority that I think we all know we have in the next two to five years. The next one uh, is to develop a community self-sustainability program to provide food, shelter, hygiene, water, communication, and utilities in the event of a disaster. And that's that's ongoing. Uh, actually, the city's made some good steps with the cat containers and working with uh, I, I want to find out more. Oh, we're replacing our water meters. I don't know, that, I thought that might help. Um, with any vulnerability, but I just threw that in there as something I could think of. Uh, I don't know. I thought they were replaced else. already. Pardon? Or weren't they replaced already? Could be. Ours was replaced like a year ago or more. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that affected anyone else. I just want it's ongoing. We just had ours replaced, not like in the end of the summer, but I think it's an ongoing thing, particularly the okay. old part of town. Okay, that's good. It says ongoing, so that's a long process. Uh, hey, excuse me, Carol. I, yeah. I'm wondering why we, we list a lot of things multi-hazard, and and I'm trying to interpret, like, like number two is 
probably earthquake and tsunami that affect the coast. Why don't we label them if they're only one or two of the of the hazards rather than say multi-hazard for 10 or 12 of them in a row, can't we just put the, the specific hazard, if, even if it's one or two of them? I know, the council didn't like the way this was laid out either. They thought it was too wordy and redundant and uh, but some of these, many of these tasks or actions do cover several of the risks. I understand that, but uh, anyway, it just seemed to me like some of them are kind of specific. I mean, yeah. specific to one or two items rather than all six or seven. But yeah. that's just a suggestion. I, I like sure. it. And I've, I've got a few comments to that effect as we go through here. Carol, this is Terry again. I, this is where I'm coming from. I received this. I went through it. I looked at it. I didn't know what you as your planning commissioner or planning person is asking us as commissioners to do. Are you asking us to speak it? Are you asking us to adopt it? What when I read through this, what do you want me to be looking for to report back? Yeah. This is a long document, and what what do you need from the planning committee to go back to whoever you need to go back to? Yeah. Well, the planning committee to me is just another set of several eyes and not local knowledge. Um, that might have some input and like well, I've already received some already and it's really nothing more than that at this point if they're you know this is a public meeting if there's anybody and it was announced and if there's anybody that wanted to know what this was that's another way to make it known and uh, but specifically you're not adopting it this is not a public hearing it's just an informal review and any uh, advice or objections or if you're not interested, fine. Uh, if you, <laughs> that's all I'm looking for. David, did you want to say something? I'm wondering, I think Carol is looking for people to review this and maybe make some suggestions on how we can streamline it or consolidate some things and make it a little more friendly to approach, uh, which I'd be glad to spend more time doing that is because you're right, Russ, it is large and confusing. Carl, you're shaking your, your head. We need to do this. We need to have they asked us to prove it. We did this five years ago? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's been ongoing. Chad's been giving you very occasional periodic updates. And uh, that's true, and, and so now it's coming to a closure. I think the county hopes to adopt it in a couple months. And I'm just looking for any feedback that might make it more meaningful to us, uh, especially if we want to get, you know, grants or funding or anything. I mean, uh, so it's, you're right, you're all right about this. Uh, and it's, it's really the end of this project. So. Uh, Carol, I have problems reading it when your first line says error, no text of specified style and document. And then we had question marks and deleted. And if this is close to the final draft, I, I thought this is much rougher draft because we've got, um, it's hard for me to understand question marks. Yeah. We've got we've got a terrific spelling error here that just cracked me up. Um, on page five, the second from the bottom, the landslide. 
require maintenance of vegetation on barred soils. I don't know if you mentioned Shakespeare there. Um, <laughs> okay. I know. I, I love barred soil. We don't know what, I mean, we say, is that okay. fair? Hard? What is it? It's um, fair. Just put in to make sure somebody knows you read it. Yeah, I'm good for it. Um, but that's my problem. Is when you've got um, uh, gaps and all of that. And so it goes to Terry's question what are we supposed to be doing it? Because we've read through it, but there's so many empty things. All right, let me tell you that the table numbers and the errors, this is the county's document. We're just like a little sliver of it that has been extracted from the whole. So Arch Cape, Canter Beach, Warrington, Napa, Astoria, they're all in here. Then this is our little section, um, Seaside. And for instance, Warrington is doomed if there's a flood. I just want you to know that. Uh, anyway, I, I understand your frustration. I, I'm happy to just go take this away and finish it myself. If you have anything uh, that you wanted to say, I plan to clean it up and consolidate some of these sections that seem to be redundant. The question marks to me uh, were mine. And I, I, so let's, because let's just go to the few question marks and if you can answer them, um, that would help me. And so it may not be you, it might be staff. So look at page five under, I think that's the first set of question marks, drought. Page four. Page four. Oh, page four. Okay. Um, so uh, under multi-hazard CERT response teams. CERT for each neighborhood. Yeah. And what I didn't know personally uh, is the status of that. Is that just ongoing or I, I didn't know what to say as far as the status and explanation? Well, Paulina would be the one to ask that question of. Yeah. yeah true. This is ongoing. But it's ongoing. Absolutely. Okay, so we're all on the same page so far. Uh, on that one. The next one is uh, earthquake. Oh, it's drought. 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 Sorry. Drought. Implement a water conservation plan. Well, here's one I really want to know what you think about, uh, or if there is one, to ensure adequate water supply. Does anybody know of any city? water conservation plan well there it seems there would be two things that would affect adequate water supplies one would be a landslide and two would be a tsunami uh, and okay. severing any supply lines that come from our water source yes well this is under drought so that would be the question is if we have a if we are feeling susceptible to drought, which I think is a low priority, although I guess I didn't write it down, but so far I think it's uh, low, don't you? <laughs> I, I agree that it's low. And to me, it seems like you, you would implement, you, trying to do something in advance of the drought is just kind of shooting it you know, shooting out both sides of the, of both windows of the car. Uh, I mean, if we had a drought, you would implement policies that say no lawn watering. You know, you would make suggestions, but to do them in advance of the drought is just kind of like, well, why? We may That's never right. have it. Well, I just wondered if any of you, and Chad's not available lately, and you will be next week, but I didn't know what, exactly who would know i figured you as water users or being more familiar i have a water meter too but is, there's no um in the city there's no water conservation plan going on just because of the goodness of being uh, 
you know, conservationists, right? No. We live in Oregon. Yeah. It's going to rain. Well, we're going to keep it as a low priority. There's no timeline to do anything. I'll yep. fill that in. Carol, what, what, you said you had volunteered to go through and clean this up. Yeah. What if you went through and cleaned this up and then came up with the areas where you want our input and then at the next meeting, we can give you that input on that on the issues that you're concerned with. Because all we're doing now is just kind of flailing around. Well, you know it. what? I, I think I'm almost done. I, I can do that, Terry, but I, I'm not sure we need to. But you, you're pointing out these question marks that I can fill in if I find anything else out from the staff on the water. If I can just run through the other few questions, okay. sure. uh, I think uh, you won't need to do that, but, but we'll see when we get finished. So, uh, earthquake um, evacuation plan. Does, as, as far as I know, the city doesn't have any formal evacuation plan. We're, we've got lots of evacuation routes that are defined in our transportation system plan. We've got new signage going up. We have the uh, go the go packs in the for the short term rentals as an incentive. Is, are you familiar with any other evacuation plan that I could add here? You know, I I, I live in the Bay Area. I've been through big earthquakes, and when they hit. There, there's really no evacuation plan. You just <laughs> wait till it's over. Or, I mean, how do you run away from an earthquake? Well, in, in the Bay Area, what your job is to do is try and keep up with Terry. <laughs> no, what you do is go to the house that has the most wine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. The evacuation plan for an earthquake. Carol, you about 18 seconds. Uh, I think we, yes, Carl. Carol, don't they, don't they do the great organ shake out with those, uh, basically a practicing of the... Maybe Austin, Austin, wait, wait, Austin, Carl is speaking. Austin, wait, wait, Austin, Uh, I couldn't quite catch that, Carl, but uh, can you type that out for me and send it to me by email? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. I, we really appreciate your effort there, uh, Carl. I know you have some good ideas. Um, and Austin, Austin, yes, a good Austin, idea, Austin. Austin. Great amount of great shake out. Yeah. The, Austin. Yeah. They don't they do the the great organ shake out, which is basically just um, getting the third teams together and doing a an evacuation drill. Yes, that's a good one. Thank you. I think that's it. Um, all right, here's a here's one for all of you. Is there any way you can prepare uh, for a winter storm in some? <laughs> Oregon, our winter storms are 90% of the time, 99% going to be rain and wind. And we're going to get a dusting of snow, maybe. And our best plan is to stay at home. Which is really, really well. But I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think we made any preparations. Could the city partner with the power companies to evaluate all power lines next to trees that are vulnerable? 
They're in during our winter spawn event. Oh, good idea. I like that, Austin. Can you evaluate how? Carol, can you ask uh, Austin to repeat his idea? Austin, will you repeat that for David? Can we have the city partner with the with the power companies to do an evaluation of trees within the city and or power power lines that are vulnerable due to a storm event? Very good. But I, but I do know every year it seems like it's on tracks with tree trimming company to go around and address the most obvious. It seems I've seen trucks around quite off quite regular over the last five to ten years. So it, it wouldn't hurt to double check on that at all. Yeah. Um, I know that they've trimmed the trees back on 101, like away from the wires, and they 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 do trim branches away from the wires on a regular basis. I've had them come to our property and cut a few down. I think that's private property. <laughs> no, it's in the right of way, I guess. <laughs> But it's right by the line, so uh, they were very helpful. But that's at least something worth mentioning. I, that's a good one. Uh, so I don't think we'll delete it because maybe we'll come up with something else in the future. Uh, wildfires on the last page. Um, the police or the fire chief said, get rid of number two because we don't have fuel tanks that would be a potential hazard in the event of a wildfire. I'm taking that out. And that's it. Okay. Can you think you can Hey Carol. Yeah. Um, on page four, the evaluate the construction of critical facilities and public utilities. Um, it mentions reconstruct and harden the Ecopsy Creek culverts of Civic Way and Gerard Loop. Uh, I, I, I just wanted to mention that a partner or potential funding source would also be the Mechanica Watershed Council for any of those culvert replacements. I just wanted to make sure you do that. Yeah, Watershed Council. Hey, uh, is that number two there? Yeah, okay. Yeah, number two and number page four. Got it. Uh, uh, the, what's the first part of that name of the council? The coast? The northwest? The north? north? Mechanica. Mechanica and watershed council. Thank you. Along that same line, Carol, uh, there's a, there's a culvert out here on Highlands also. And, and of course, Highlands would be the only way for people in the reserve up here to get out. I, I don't know if that, I don't know where that falls, but um, there is a culvert there also. There's one on G Street too. And I meant to say G Street, yeah, G Street, because those are all Neocoxie and Highland Road? Lane. Lane. Yeah, good, good. The council was really adamant about that one being up. We want that one to get done sooner rather than later in all those locations. That would be a high priority just to get out as a lifeline. Yeah. Or emergency services to get in. And that too. Okay, so I've it. Yeah. Okay. Too painful. So where you're going to go back to fix things, are you going to show this to a, to us again before you've done your final, or is this our last view of it? It's up to you. Do I hear anything? 
I'd say I don't know that we need to see it again. I mean, city council is going to approve it anyway, so they will put an eye on it that may negate or add to whatever we're suggesting. Okay. The what the question I had, and going back to your Dogami, were like landslide, which to me is irrelevant to our community. Can we take out? When, when they make those kind of suggestions and we say, hey, you screwed up, Doug Emmy, <laughs> is that part of our is that part of our process or, or is that are they a sacred uh, agency? Well, the, 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 <clears throat> if you go back to this coastal, table, coastal the erosion problem. is what the little the little beach people, which Stephanie can uh, address. <laughs> That's coastal erosion, not landslide. Uh, landslide. So I, I don't see that it's even relevant, but I, maybe all these items are part of their agenda and we we, we have to comment on it. So okay. what I found in this table from the Dogami is that there's 55 <coughs> buildings that are affected by, that are exposed to landslide. And there's 81 exposed to coastal erosion. There's, you know, 1,200 exposed to tsunami. So this is, based on their analysis, you know, that's enough to count as an issue. Where are they getting their numbers? Where did they get 81? Right, but that's, yeah, exactly, Stephanie. To me, we went through this with the housing study from a year or two ago when, when somebody came and said, well, there's, you know, so many lots left in Gearhart and they were off by... 100%. You know, I mean, yeah. Just because it's from an agency doesn't mean it's accurate. Anyway, well, I don't want to muddy the waters. I'm just throwing that out there. I I understand. It's important. Well, the very first thing I said, remember, this is a 99-page document. I told you what these numbers came from counting buildings uh, based on the Clatsop County Tax Assessor location of building so it's a real number uh, okay. it's a it's a it's it's a so it's sit down and count them and the document actually shows the buildings on a map oh well hey I, that's fine i i'm not wanting to make a big deal out of it i just was asking yeah, well, I think the landslide is a, an issue, uh, particularly over on the east side, but I will try and dig down, not that I'll ever get back to you on this anytime soon, but and figure out which those buildings are. Okay, sure. David? Carol, I have a question about your survey that you mentioned about counting buildings. Uh, is it the city water storage reservoir system up in the hills? Uh -huh. Would that be subject to effect by landslide um, in addition to earthquake, but not uh -huh. affect erosion? I mean, that's an expensive facility that they built up there. And I have no, I've never been there, so I have no idea. Is it, it going to slide down the hill after 10 inches of rain or something? I don't know. Uh, is, is that no, but... Uh, apparently the soils there are such that there could be a landslide in those hills and you know I'll go back and see if that water tank is on that on their maps but you know uh, like I said we the city kind of discovered this after the way after the water tower was put in um, from all the all the tsunami and earthquake data that there, in fact, are landslides in those front. They could be from in those hills, and that's why we switch directions on where to run um, for other reasons too. You you'll have a hard time getting there in time, but is, that was one of the reasons. Is that where the uh, emergency storage cash is up there by the tower also? Um. <laughs> Is that I where think the, they are. The storage barrels in the, in the uh, storage. The, the cache. Are the shipping containers up there by the uh, water towers? I think Carl's they are. Nodding. Is, is oh. that, are you nodding that that's the case, Carl? Yes, Carl is yeah. nodding that it's the case. 
I right. think that's right. You know, is all that water stuff City of Gearhart? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's not in the county. You know, that's where the water, Warrenton Water District pipe is, I believe, coming from. So it's, uh, I don't know if Warrenton is the jurisdiction for it, but it's, might be, it might be Warrenton built. Because that's what we know. Go ahead. Tom, did you have something to say? I see that you've turned on your picture. Yes, thank you very, very much. I wonder about the landslide, if they're talking about the houses that are along the Neocoxie Creek here. Because some of those are built pretty high off of the off the waterway there. So that could be. Yeah. And also, I think that the water tower was placed there because it was one of the only places that was bedrock. And there's a, all the other places were landslide areas. So that's all I've got to say. No, that's Thank good. You. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Carol, I have a question. Who wrote these definitions for earthquake flood landslides? Where did they come uh, from? Are you talking about on um, before the mitigation action? Yep, I'm talking about page two. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a combination of the people writing the the county's staff who are who are putting this big project together, and uh, with our additions, I added the Neowana, Neocanicum, and Neocoxy information and the foothills. I added some things here to their kind of basic language. This is a document that will be at the county, right? It's a county document for all the jurisdictions in the county. I really worry. I'm not comfortable at all with having that in there with landslides because what if a mortgage company comes up and sees this? What if insurance comes up and sees this? What if FEMA comes up and sees this? I think that this could really kind of affect affect people, me specifically, but others too. Um, yeah, it looks like this landslide section needs some work, and I will do that. I'm, I'll be talking to the coordinator of this whole document tomorrow morning. I'll ask her that question, um, and also try to get to the pin down what those 55 buildings are. Yeah. Uh, okay. Have we given Carol enough to keep her out of trouble? Are there any other comments? Any All right, Carol. Yes. I, okay, I thought I heard some. Okay, so we're going to move on, Carol, if that's okay with you. Yes, I, that's very helpful. Thank you. That's all I wanted. Okay. Do we have any concerns of the commission? Yeah. Yeah, this is Terry. Uh, can we get an update on, on the school site? Um, I don't know, unless Carol has some additional information. Do you have any additional information, Carol, on the school site? The city council's been working uh, more specifically than I have and you have, uh, but I can tell you that a fence is going up and it's going across Pacific Way so that transients and abandoned vehicles cannot be uh, enter the property. And you, don't mean, oh, you mean in front of Pacific Way, not across Pacific Way? No, no, no. Along Pacific Way, okay. one end to the other. Um, and there's a bit of everybody can hear me okay okay yeah well anyway there's lots of ideas floating around based on the uh, owner who i think is 
um, interested in keeping the building, having some studio apartments, um, looking at a library. <laughs> Somebody's phone is really. Put the phone away to where it is. Okay, go ahead, Carol. Yeah. Anyway, and so the owner is uh, taking has been taking some of the city councilors on tour, and you know he has lots of ideas. The uh, the first thing is to get a caretaker in there, which would come as a conditional use request to you, uh, because in that public zone for school zoning uh you can have a caretaker live there i don't know what his plan is is for putting a new unit or using uh, adapting a few of the classrooms into a space i think that'll be his first step and then the second step will be a rezoning uh request to you starting with you uh, to zone it for I don't know what yet. Um, maybe some, probably some residential dwellings, as well as converting potentially the school into studio apartments. And I, you know, there. Let's see. I think he's interested in keeping the east side open as a play field. That the city would uh, work with him or collaborate with him to maintain it and use it for soccer um, and public access and maybe grant the property to the city. Um, there's just, as you know, nothing is for sure and there's lots of ideas floating around that are interesting and good and possible, uh, but there will be permitting that it'll be a couple years before it gets through a zone change and anything happens. Okay, thank you, Carol. Thank you for asking that question, Carrie. Any other concerns out there? We're good. Then it is. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. President, could you, could you just ask if there's anybody in the audience? I don't know exactly who these callers are. That would have one anything to do with Tom and one is R.J. Marks, who's, who's recording it for the newspaper. And that's it? I'm here. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, yes, I am here. Uh, Alex. Excuse me, Jenny. I have a question before we leave. Yes. Um, reading the newspaper yesterday, uh, I noticed that it was mentioned that in the City Council's review of the C1 zone amendments mm. at 10 o'clock closing time was eliminated, and I did not recall that out of hand. Oh, that was a good report I could have made. Um, the 10 o'clock closing time has been eliminated for their last hearings through the council. I think, oh God, I have to go back. I mean, you should see my file on that. It's this thick. Uh, what they did take out last month in the first reading was the alcoholic beverages being open to any kind of alcohol. Yeah. That was the main thing they made last time. But the 10 o'clock limit i believe came out of your final draft i mean removing it it, it was removed without we changed definition thank you i think it was so we changed the definition of that remember we we did some uh what was it cafe we 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 changed some wordings and square footage and outside seating and I, I don't have it in front of me exactly yeah what you did was you kept the uh square footage limitation in the neighborhood cafe to 1300 square feet you took out the number of seats because that was uh, duplicative and hard to enforce 
I think you took out the 10 a 10 p.m. closure limit, uh, and you added in alcoholic beverages, which the council has decided not to. They're concerned about uh, bad behavior, I guess. People, you know, cocktails coming out with to-go cocktails and little too little too far from the original intent of the neighborhood cafe in that zone well my, my raises a question in my mind was that if we were trying to maintain a semi-residential supportive c1 zone any business staying open past 10 o'clock is that really necessary is it necessary that a grocery or a cafe, or a pub, or whatever, remain open past 10 o'clock on any given evening, weekdays or weekends. As to my mind, that doesn't really fit in very well with a residential feel for a C1 zone. We've talked about plenty about trying to make it look like a residential zone with the, the roofs and the windows, et cetera, et cetera. But anything that's open at 10 o'clock at night on a Thursday, when nobody's here, I mean, it's kind of crazy. And I'm also thinking uh, the 10 o'clock closing time has been observed for decades and nobody's ever complained about it until the last few years when some new people moved in and wanted to stay open later. Yeah, it's, it's and, now it's, city, it's a city council situation. Now it's nothing to do with us. Not I think, that. That, yeah, yes, it is. It's way down the line. I think they'll have one more reading finally after two years adopted. Uh, this was your discussion as a planning commission, as I recall. Trying, and the reality is that it's self-enforcing. I mean, it. There's no business down there at 10. The owners, I think if they could stay open later, they probably wouldn't. Uh, it's just like both John, Alan, and uh, Tracy, they both said they weren't interested in selling alcohol other than wine and beer, for instance. And I, I don't think either of them ever had any interest in staying open past 10, but they they didn't object or push it either way. I, I believe this planning commission was trying to be less, um, have less constraints, and that was one of the reasons you took it out. Isn't it well, hard to remember? <laughs> maybe my next comment will be to the city council then. Okay. All right, David. Thank you. Um, Austin, Zapsos, anywhere else? Carl, did you have anything? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What? No, okay. 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 Carol, what he's trying to say as far as earthquakes is what we all read. Safest places, door, fr door frames, bathtubs, anything that's mm -hmm. little refrigerator, anything with little extra reinforcement. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. I agree. If, if nothing else, it is 704 and I adjourn the meeting. Good night. Good All right, thank you. Thank you. Carol, do you have anything for us next month? Um, no, except that the, the Bantas are uh, now coming back to divide their lot again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's all I know of right now. Okay. Awesome. Do you have awesome. anything? Do you have anything? No, no. Okay. I just want to go and get my vaccine. Yeah, same. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Good night. And thank you.
Bye bye. Oh, I get a call for Lyman. Thank you. Take it easy.